We finally trained our marketing mix model. And in this episode, we're going to analyze all the insights that we can receive and interpret from the marketing mix model we trained. So we're going to focus on three main things. First one is analyze previous performances, analyze what are the factors that previously contributed the most to generating incremental sales and what were the channels in which we shouldn't have spent there. So we want to detect wasted budget first. Second level, we want to understand whether we overspent in certain channels. And third level, we want to actually plan new media investments to maximize my ROI. So first thing first, what we can see from the beginning is a time series that shows us the predicted revenue versus the actual revenue. And as you can see, this, uh, this model is really, really precise. It has an overall accuracy, aka R square, it of 89%. This 89% represent the percentages of input variables that describe the, the variance in the output variable. It's a little technical. I'm not going to go too deep in this. Average error, which is NRMSC, nominal root mean squared error, which is 6.12%. And then we have business error. Business error, it's a, a translation from Dagon per SSD, which is a metric developed by Meta. And it's used by Facebook Robin, the algorithm that we use to train our marketing mix models, to find the optimal models between the Pareto efficiency that I showed you in the previous episode. Then let's scroll down because we want to actually see from the ROI comparison of each campaign type, but where the best performing channels. As you can see, radio, Google search brand, performance max, and Facebook catalogs, product catalog sales are the most performing. They have an ROI, okay, ROAS, bigger than one. And especially radio has a ROI of eight, which is impressive. Then second place is Google search brand. And then we have Facebook product catalog sales. There are other channels that had an incremental impact like display, Google search for brand influencers and TV ads, but their ROI, ROAS, their ROI, it's lower than the best performing. And then we have some other channels like magazine ads and Facebook conversions that actually do not have an incremental impact. We calibrated Facebook conversions at the beginning, but what the model found is that Facebook conversions, even though it has some attribution in the platform, does not show any incremental impact when, um, we model the marketing mix model and we train it. So it's actually telling us that Facebook conversions, it's over attributing itself. While Facebook product catalog sales is under attributing itself. The most of the impact is, uh, can be attributed to Facebook product catalog sales. Um, then on the right, we have some suggestions and these suggestions allow you to understand whether, wh what to do in the future. So prescribe you an action that you should do. But Google search for a brand can generate even more response if we increase its daily budget up to 51 euros a day, which is interesting, right? So we want to increase it a little bit. While the influencer is not performing as good, we should reduce it by 30 euros a day. Obviously, these are suggestions that are shown agnostically. The marketing mix model does not understand that influencers is a media channel that needs to be programmed and dealt with, dealt with uh, human interactions. It's going to tell you... Uh, and suggest you to reduce the budget as if it were, as if it was a retail advertising channel. Let's go down and let's see the decomposition waterfall that shows us the contribution, how much each factor contributed to our sales. As we can see, Facebook product catalog sales in the first place, second place is radio, then we will search brand in performance max. If we want to actually look at how much we spent, how much revenue we generated in each campaign type, we can see on the right, Facebook product catalog sales has spent 96, 96K, but has generated 293 euros, 1,000 euros as revenue. So this is interesting. Same thing for radio ads, but radio ads generated most, uh, more or less the same amount of revenue, but has, has spent only 36,000. This is why it's telling us here in the left that radio ads has a great potential to generate more revenue despite its low budget, and it's suggesting us to increase the budget up to 84 euros a day. Then we have TV ads, which is the current ROI is zero, suggesting that no conversions are being generated from the current spend. And we suggest to reduce it daily budget and daily spending down to 18 euros a day, which is interesting. Again, it's in the marketing mix model interprets these channel as retail advertising channels. So you need to take this insight and then interpret it internally to understand how to plan the future. And this is just insights that we can get and to understand better what's happening and what are the results and insights that the marketing mix model understood from
from analyzing our data. If we scroll down again, we can see the seasonality and we can see what is the next period that we're going to analyze. For example, from here, we're analyzing from 16, the next period, actually, starting from the 1st of January until the 19th of May, because the last data point, uh, the when we saved it, let's see, yes, this is the 31st of December, the right next period is from 1st of January to 19th of May, and as we can see, compared to the previous period, we see an increase in demand, about 36% increase in demand. This insight should allow us to understand how much to increase our overall marketing investments in the next period. So in the next period, we should increase our marketing investments by 30%, and then, especially in the first days of the year, and then reduce it in February, then reduce it again at the end of February, and so on. We want to actually analyze a little better what's the distribution of the impact of all my media channels over time. So we want to go to models or models details. Obviously, we have the same share of effect, share of spend that we saw in the model list and select model. But right under it, there is a decomposition over time, week per week, at a weekly basis. So even though you trained a daily model, you're going to see this graph at a daily basis. It's going to show us why we got positive spikes of sales over time and why we didn't. As we can see, I um, remove baseline from here because it's actually, there's no baseline in this model. That's interesting. And according to this model, the reason why we got this positive spike in this case, it was because we got a positive spike of performance max. Performance max drove incremental, way more incremental sales. Same thing with Google search brand. If we remove this, we have an increase in impact in Google search brand here too. So the reason why we got this positive spike is mainly because of Google search brand and Google search performance max. And a little bit of radio ads too, right? And in this case, Facebook protocol sales also increase its marketing budget. Now, the other channels are always almost flat. And as we can see, if we deselect Facebook, Google search, no brand, this graph shows us the distribution of our marketing investments over time. And here we see the impact of these investments over time. We can compare the results. We can get uh, remove Google Search Brand, Google Performance Max, and Radio. As you can see, the distribution is pretty much, it's not really varying. That's not vary a lot over time. But here, the impact is pretty much stable over time. So this is why uh, this channel, this channel do not seem to generate a lot of incremental impact, a lot of incremental impact overall. And um, while if we select the other channels, let's, so let's deselect all the non-performing, not well, super performing channel, and let's leave with the best performing channels, like Facebook product catalog sales, Google's performance max, Google search bread. Look at this. There is a lot of variance. These are the three, and actually we have a fourth, which is radio ads. And let's see how these change. So I'll remove everyone else, every other variable. As you can see, there is a lot of variance in the spend and also in the in contribution of these factors. And the reason why here we got a negative spike is because we re we reduced the marketing budget into Google search brand performance max. Let's deselect it to see whether we reduce the budget elsewhere. We reduced also in Google search brand in the last period and the other two channels, which is Google search now brand and in radio. Perfect. Now, with this insight, we understand that there are four top performing channels. There are other two or three not really well channel, but they, they, they're generating incremental sales. And then there are two channels that are not driving incremental sales, which are Facebook conversions and magazine ads. Now, what we want to do now is we want to understand whether we are overspending or underspending in certain channels. So let's dive into it. Let's go to channel discovery. Right, I move myself here. Perfect. So display ads, as we can see in display ads, we're investing 484 euros a day, but it looks like that uh, we're generating actually we're spending 871 euros a day as an average, but we're generating 483 euros a day. So the ROI for this volume of investments is 0.5. What happens if we reduce it? In this case, the ROI at five, 500 euros a day invested is around 0.7. So if we reduce the marketing budget in display as, it looks like that we're going to increase our ROI, but it's not going to sur surpass the one ROI. 1x ROI. If you go, we see the ad stock effects. The ad stock effect is going to give us an understanding of what's the delayed effect from the moment in which I invest to the moment in which I see the impact from uh, these investments. And as you can see, display ads, because it's a middle funnel campaign, it has a delayed effect of 12 days for this brand. If we can see here, 
this makes sense. The correlation effect coefficient is really low. This means that there is um, there is either no incremental impact, but the incremental impact there is. We found it thanks to the training, or it's delayed. And in fact, there is incremental impact, which is not really big, but it's delayed. There is and it's delayed. Let's see other channels. So I want to see Facebook product catalog sales, and I want to compare it here with the scatter plot. Now, as we can see right now, we're investing two six. 600, 700 euros and we're generating 2000. It looks like there is a linear correlation here at the beginning. And I want to compare this diminishing returns curve with the scatter plot that I have here. I want to understand and compare these two curves because I want to actually see how robust this diminishing returns curve is. Because all the impact is mostly dedicated and present the same day in which we invest, this correlation is really, really high. Now, what we can see is that after spending a thousand euros a day, 950 more or less, the insights here are not, we don't have a lot of records, which means that there is a greater possibility that these curves here does not behave in this way. If we want to make our marketing mix more efficient, we need to take into account this uncertainty, this lack of records. There are only two records at these volume of investments and do not, are not statistically significant. We want to take to account the distribution of these dots here in order to see where the diminishing return curve is robust. And and then the second thing that I want to do, I want to understand what happens if to the ROI, if we reduce the budget down to 500. It looks like that the optimal volume investment is around this volume. So it's uh, 700 because if we reduce it, the ROI effect is less than three. While in here, it's uh, a little more than three. Let's compare it to influencers. Here, again, influencers. Influencers do not seem to have a lot of impact. In fact, they have an ROI lower than one. If we invest 250, 75 euros a day, we generate 180. And we have a really long halo effect in this case for the more than 30 days, but most of the effect is in the same day. Well, the correlation effect is really low. That's why I found that there is a long halo effect where most of the conversions generated by this channel are distributed over time. Now, we saw all the information here. And if we want to get a little deeper on each graph and everything, we can toggle these two toggles and we can see the other parameters that Cassandra found. Now, if you know the formula for ad stock weighable PDF, which is this one, and the formula for diminishing returns heal transformation, you can actually derive the same uh, coefficient and the same other parameters from and the same shape from these other parameters. Now, we're probably overspending in here. We should spend around 100 euros a day to get a almost one ROI. We're spending the optimal amount in Facebook conversions, and we want to replicate this procedure for all the channels that we have. We want to detect whether there are channels in which we are overspending and channels in which we are underspending. We want to be really precise and peculiar in understanding each campaign type we have in our marketing mix. Now, last part that we want to do is create a new media plan for the future and see what would happen if we implement this new media plan. And this media plan has some characteristics. The first one is it needs to maximize my sales. So what I want to do is I want to insert a test here. It's called a test three. I want to invest 188,000 in advertising in the next in 28 days. Actually, Let's try to do something. They want to invest 160,000 euros a day uh, in, this, in the next 28 days. I click optimize budget. What it's going to do, it's going to create and use the diminishing returns curve and the ad stock effects to find out what is the optimal volume of investments in each campaign type we have in our marketing mix. And it's going to predict the incremental revenue that we're going to generate thanks to this new budget plan. Also, not only that, it's going to show us the ROI, the predicted ROI that we're going to get from these investments. Keep in mind one thing though, the channels on which do not show any incremental impact, they're going to reduce the marketing budget by 90%. We put some constraint just to not show you uh, really drastic changes in your marketing mix. But you can change that and I can show you. Right, so as we can see, we're going to invest 160K and we're going to generate 302,000 euros of marketing revenue 
which is a plus 19%. So we decrease the marketing budget, but we will increase the revenue we generate. The result would be an increase in ROI by 42%. The, the suggestion is going to give us is to decrease marketing budget and display, Facebook conversions, Google search not brand, influencers, magazine ads, and TV ads, but increase the marketing budget and reallocate this marketing budget to radio, Google search brand, Google performance max, and Facebook product catalog sales. So in these cases, using all the diminishing returns curve and all the insights that he found to distribute their mar the marketing budget more efficiently. The drastic changes, you cannot see drastic changes in magazine ads, for example, Facebook conversions, because there are some constraints that block it. If you want to remove these constraints and show what would happen if you uh, leave them free, just click customize constraints. And you can say that the minimum budget that you want is zero. So let's go to Facebook conversions. I want it zero as a minimum budget. And I want uh, magazine ads to have zero. What happens if we give him complete freedom and see how the distribution will go? So I click validate budget allocator. Oh, sorry. I click optimize budget. Sorry, I need to name it. Test number four. And I want to invest 160K. Right now we have an optimal incremental paid revenue predicted of 302. Let's see what it comes out if we give him more freedom. Awesome. So <laughs> this is what happens when we give him complete freedom to the budget allocator. It's finding we're not generating 302K, we're generating 315 with a 48 increase percent increase in ROI. And as you can see, the marketing budget, there is some, some marketing budget investing in Facebook conversions and magazine ads, but it's really low. You can avoid spending it if you don't want to because they do not seem to generate an incremental impact. But yeah, most of the reallocated budget is allocated into Facebook product catalog sales, um, some on radio, and most of it in performance max. Now, we analyzed how to interpret the results, and this operation can be done at a monthly basis with refreshes. In the next episode, we're going to analyze and understand how to refresh our model over time. This would allow us to understand how the channels behave over time and how we should uh, get a better output. Hope uh, this has been useful. Hope this has been useful and see you in the next episode. Bye.